that it's a UFO. Lots of talk lately about unidentified aerial phenomenon. Well, back in 2001, the secret was finally out. Power Acoustic and this April-May 2001 mobile entertainment showed off the Area 51 amplifiers. These were definitely out of this world. Here you can see the design of the amplifier. The model 520X2 was $400. That's the model that we have. So let's look at the Car Audio and Electronics from May 2001. You can see the model 520-2, $430 is what it lists for here. Let's get it taken out of the box and see what it's all about. I love finding unique amplifiers like this. And luckily, a guy named Dylan hit me up on Facebook and said he had this amplifier. And so I decided to buy it from him. And yeah, this thing was literally brand new in the box. And unwrap it here, you can see the chrome is literally perfect. I just had to clean it off with a microfiber and you can see all the reflections. Big shout out to Brian as well, who sent me this uh, brochure. You can see some of the features. It does have edge lit blue neon with diamond cut plexi and a lot of other features, including an 18 dB low pass filter, 97 dB signal to noise ratio, and a system distress indicator. What in the heck is that? Anyway, here's a closer view of the amplifier. You can see the reflection of the sky here. Amp is just beautiful. Some of the options here, high pass filter, low pass filter, adjustable, and you can also turn off the crossover if you want. There's a variable bass boost, either on or off. That's 40 hertz up to 18 dB. Then we have the level control for the gain. We have RCA low level inputs and we have a high level adapter as well. On the opposite side, two 15 amp fuses. You can see the connections there are upside down. That's obvious you can't really get to them from the top if you want to screw that down. Then there's the speaker terminals on the opposite side. Here we flip the amp upside down so you can see these terminals. These are insert terminals that can accept four gauge with spade connectors. And the amplifier is bridgeable as well. This is a two channel amplifier. We'll get to the specs here in just a minute. Here's the bottom. You can see how it has the round look of the heat sink, looking like a spaceship for the wind. Got some slots there in the bottom for cooling. As far as dimensions go, 15 inches in diameter, 2.5 inches in height. And let's try some big dummy math. With 15 amp fuses times 14.4, that's 432 watts. We're gonna say it's about 65% efficient because it's a class AB. We're estimating about 281 watts. The amp is rated 125 by two at four ohms, 150 by two at two ohms, or 300 by one bridged at four ohms. We're gonna start off with the stereo test. Let's get the amp plugged in and make sure it actually turns on and works. All right, got this Area 51 amp hooked up. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen, but let's power it up and see. Okay, I have blue. LEDs and lots of reflections. As far as the amp settings go for the amp dyno, we have it tuned to the ADPRS gain match with 7 dB overlap using the DD1 Plus. Crossover is set to the full switch, which means no crossovers are involved, as well as the bass boost is set to minimum or off in this case, so it will not affect the test. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno tests. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. All right, first up, let's test the four ohm run. Stereo, rated 125 by two. I uh, anticipated this amp do about 50 watts by two. So as you can see here, it well exceeded those numbers. 84 and 83 at 14.2 volts. Let's reset the dyno here for the uncertified run. Takes us up to the clipping point. And exactly the same, 84 and 83 watts, 
Let's try the dynamic run. This is the IHF202 certified run because we are using the one kilohertz test track and uh, close to 14.4 volts. 94 and 92 watts, oh, jumped up. 95 and 97 and 94. Let's check out that efficiency. Again, this is a class AB amplifier, so it will not be that great. 60.7%. Two ohm stereo, the amp is rated 150 by two at 14.4. So let's find out what we get here at 1% THD. Again, the one kilohertz track. And wow, look at that, look how close we got. 123 and 117. That is way closer than I thought it was gonna get with this being a power acoustic. And no disrespect to power acoustic, it's just whoever rates their amps don't rate them right. Uncertified, 121 and 117 at 13.97. Then let's try the dynamic run. Let's see if we can get close to that 150 by two. Oh yes, look at this. We actually got the numbers dynamically, one kilohertz, two ohms, 151 and 146. That was very shocking to me. As far as efficiency goes, 51 and a half percent at two ohms, not gonna be good again due to the architecture of this amp. Let's bridge the amp mono and try the four ohm test. It's rated 300 watts at 14.4. You can see we use the two outer terminals here, which uh, bridge the amplifier. Rated 300 watts. We're using the 40 hertz test tone here, and we got 220 at 14.05 certified. Let's rewire the uh, settings here and try it uncertified up to clipping. See if it gives us any more than that 220. Probably gonna be pretty close as it showed before. I got a little more. 237, 13.95. Now let's try the dynamic run, 40 hertz burst track. This is simulating like a subwoofer pulse. And still a few watts shy of that 300. 271, got a little bit higher there. 273, 14.18. Efficiency again is gonna be low, 49.4% at 40 hertz, four ohms bridge mono. Let's check out the results. We call it unidentified missing power. And if you look at the four ohm certified, two ohm certified test, we're very short of the ratings, but two ohms dynamic burst, we actually got 150 watts per channel. So that met the rating. Now let's find out how it sounds. This is a Korean class AB. I gotta say up front, I was impressed. Let's try some song demos, Cutting It Close, YouTube Audio Library. Let's open the amp up and see what is inside of this Area 51 amplifier. Very unique amplifier to get inside. You can see here this late 90s, early 2000s Korean class AB design. 2200 microfarad, 35 volt caps for the rails, four of them. And for input filtering, 25 volt, 2200 microfarad. And there's two of those. And again, the amp is laid out just like a traditional class AB amp. Nothing very fancy here. Just really unique the way they did the heat sink kind of in a circle did the amplifier and the rectangular. So you got a lot of extra heat sink. Let's talk about things we like. Obviously the unique looks, you're not gonna see another amplifier like this. 
has a blue fluorescent light, plenty of heat sink to keep the amp nice and cool, did not have any issues with that. 18 dB per octave crossovers, which were very unexpected. And the sound quality, I listened to this amplifier for an hour or more with my favorite music and I was blown away with the sound quality. What could be better? Obviously the power output came shy of the ratings. Efficiency is not gonna be good because it's a class AB. Availability, good luck finding one of these, especially a new one like this. No alien connection. I'm sorry, I didn't have any proof for you today. So anyway, it was a fun video testing out this power acoustic Area 51 amplifier. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever seen one of these before. I know they were only out for the year 2001. I don't believe a ton of them were made, but again, it's really hard to find equipment like this 20 years later, but it's so much fun to find a brand new one so I can show it to you guys, show you how it performs, how it looks, how to get inside everything. I do appreciate you always for supporting me, for clicking the thumbs up for likes, and also subscribe if you like this content. There is more coming. Till next time, this is Big D. I'm out of here. All right, here we have the Area 51 two channel amp. It's not rated at one ohm. We're gonna try it anyway. One ohm, uh, one kilohertz. Certified test first, 1% THD. One thirty two and one twenty six. So it actually did handle the load. Now we'll try uncertified to clipping one ohm stereo mode, one kilohertz. I think we just popped the fuse. One thirty five and one twenty six. All right, we're still in the two channel mode. We replaced the fuses. Now we'll try the dynamic run, one kilohertz. One ninety six, one eighty nine.